Good evening, everyone. Do we need a group hug or anything before we get started? Is everyone okay? Because there you go. Just hug the person sitting next to you. Make a friend tonight. Uh, oh, oh, God, so many people are doing it. I love it. Yes. This is, we're going to have a big feeling kind of night. I love it. Uh, my name is Jarrett Weisselman. I'm here from ET Online. Very excited about what's about to happen. The woman who gives us tears every Tuesday night, soon to be Thursdays this fall, and last night won Best Supporting Actress in a Drama at the Critics' Choice Awards, Monica Potter. Just in case, need a quick chain. For myself, my, my youngest is seven, so I don't know why I still carry it. <laughs> it's always good to be prepared. You never. I have depends in here if anybody needs one. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Um, <laughs> could you imagine? I just. Anyway. <laughs> Thank you guys for coming here. This is so nice to see everyone. I. It's just nice. Thanks. Well, Monica, you know, listen. People love this show. It's very strange to me because I feel like. I meet two kinds of people, people who don't watch Parenthood and are clearly idiots, and people who love this show with every fiber of their being because it's the most emotionally cathartic night of television in the history of television. Yeah. Um, I mean, what is it like to be a part of a show that elicits that kind of reaction from people? I mean, you must get stopped all the time on the street from fans of the show be like, thank you for making me cry. Oh. You know what, I think what's happened in the past couple of years is that everyone can you know, identify with a character on the show and, and relate to what they're going through. And um, you know, thankfully, I mean, for me, I sort of just emulate what, and do what Jason Kadams tells me to do. So in a, to the best of my ability, so if I'm, it, this season, and I told you this before, has been such a gift for me because, oh, I'm not going to start crying. Damn it. We've all, know, we've all, a, the I'm room has already big, done it tonight, so you're just <laughs> joining the crowd. No, I, I, I'm not a big crier in real life, really. Um, <laughs> but I just, <laughs> I just feel such gratitude for this storyline, and, you know, I'm... The fact that I was able to leave it at the door uh, every night and come home and see, you know, be with my kids and and I felt uh, totally going off the subject, but a little bit of guilt not having have gone through that and so just full of joy and and thankful that we were able to to show that and. Fans do come up to us at Whole Foods or Trader Joe's. I I like Ralph's. Um, I was there today. I just got some more pizza rolls because I'm obsessed with Gino's pizza rolls. Anyway, I am. Anyway, um, and the, you know, the lady, another lady, came up today and just gave me a hug. And they feel like they can connect with you and they know you. And um, to me, that's such a gift to do this job. Um, you know, I don't. It's just that's. I'm so lucky. You know that I don't. I'm lucky I'm not, I don't want to play a cop or a lawyer ever, because I would suck at it. <laughs> I would be like crying all the time. <laughs> Freeze! <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> or whatever lawyers, I did play a lawyer for a minute and I sucked. Um, anyway, <laughs> um, but it, yeah, I just feel like I'm lucky, thank you, I'm lucky to do it, so. Well, I would love to, I'm going to go back to the beginning a little bit now and talk about the audition for Parenthood. Uh, for, I think everyone is probably well aware of this, but the show is created and run by Jason Kadams, who did Friday Night Lights, who is very much a believer in sort of organic expression. What does that translate to in an audition? Um, I, w the way that it was set up for me was that I was told that there's this show called Parenthood, and it's, you know, and I said, I don't want to play a mom. I'm like, what the? I, I am a mom. <laughs> Why wouldn't I? I just was like, because I don't want to play a mom yet. Uh, I was a mom at 18. Like, I don't know what the hell I was thinking, because I wanted to stay younger. 
what? <laughs> I think I was afraid of it. I think I was really afraid of it. And so, and I know when I say no to something immediately, that's what I'm afraid of it. And so I, you know, my agency was like, go and, and they, they really want you to do this. And Jason called and said, we really want you to do this. And I was like, okay, okay. Um, and they're like, okay, so come up for the audition. And I'm like, the audition? You just want, you just told me you want me to <laughs> you want me to do this. I had heard that there was another lady that they that they had already cast in the role, and for something I heard this after the fact, because otherwise I would have had like I would have needed my depends, you know, in, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> you know, you wear my depends. <laughs> um, okay, I won't tell anyone. Um, <laughs> So I, I flew up to um, Berkeley, and I everybody was already cast, and I showed up and went to the audition, and Peter and I were reading uh, with each other, or, you know, acting with each other, and um, I was like, oh, my God, this feels really organic and natural and normal, and, um, you know, we turned around, and it was the scene where we're, I was telling him there's something wrong with my baby in the pilot episode, and I saw everyone crying, and then I started crying, and I was like, oh, I know what it was. They said, bring a bag. In case you get cast, you, you can stay. If you don't, you're on the next flight back to L.A. <laughs> I had my damn bag with me like this. I'm like, so do I get to check into the hotel? Was like, <laughs> everyone was cast, and I was just, like, crapping, you know? <laughs> Sorry. Um... It's my Cleveland coming out. I um I just I felt like wow. So I got the job. So I was I got the room key and I was checked in and I felt like, wow. I just hit the big time. So, and the other lady didn't work out. I guess. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> or there's just like a weird online only version of the show featuring <laughs> her and not you. Uh, yeah. Um, but I mean the the interesting thing about that is I don't know. Did you have sort of any background in improvisation? Is it something you just pulled from sort of your time in school? Um, you know, I don't know. I think I, I grew up in a funny family. Or not, I'm not saying I'm funny. I'm just saying like the way that you just do th My sister Jessica started earlier than I did in, in theater. And I was always, I, had, I have stage fright, so I never did theater. But I would just watch improv and, and how it worked and how you feed off of each other and um, whenever I hear the word improv I think of like the, the, st the comedy club right so with Jason and the way that they write everybody is does improv on the show and it's kind of uh, I didn't have any training in it but I learned quickly what kind of acting did you study in school if at all Do you want to learn how I act, how I learn? No, I'm just curious, like, was there... No, I'll you tell you. Please, I think the room of actors might like to know. Um, I always get really intimidated, because now you remind me of James Lipton, and now I have a stomach ache. Um, no, I'm just... Because I love him, and I get nervous. I'm not... I don't... I didn't go to theater school, or I didn't go to NYU. I grew up, you know, kind of quickly. I had a baby at 18, and then another at 23. So I, I sort of, like, um, I learned as I earned. And I was so, I was lucky to be picked, you know, by pretty good filmmakers early on. I got, I think I did my first one when I was 25. And um, I don't know, I, I learned how to act by just, by watching people. And to me, I feel like my mom used to clean the mall. Okay, it was called the Euclid Square Mall. And we grew up pretty poor. And my sisters and I have three sisters after school would go with her and sit in the middle of the mall. And Jessica and Bridget and Carrie would be like, okay, Ma, because it's my nickname, get up and imitate that, that big old, that big hillbilly over there. So I would just imitate, <laughs> I'm sorry if anyone's a hillbilly. <laughs> <laughs> I would just imitate people and, you know, and mimic people and, you know, and then I learned it's not just about mimicking, but it's about the feeling. Um, that you you create these characters in your head and what they're going through and their struggles and their joys and their life and so to me it was just very simple and I think sometimes if you overthink it um it can just become like you're a mess and so I just and I used to do that I did that for a minute 
I was on the Young and the Restless for a minute and I got canned because I would overthink it like, okay, what is Sharon feeling right now when she's dancing <laughs> in a bikini with Eddie Cibrian at the, the coffee shop? And I was like, the hell? I, it was awful. And then I just learned to let go and kind of uh, just let it happen. And that's the great thing about our show, too, is the, the way that it's written. It's just, it happens to us. I don't, I, it's like the more you try to act, and you guys know this, it's like the worst you get. So So what do stage directions in a parenthood script look like? <laughs> There's no I mean it's like a it's like a variety show, it's like a reality show. We at some time will have four cameras going and we'll, we'll do one take of of a scene and there's just you know crossing and there's no stage direction at all. Like upstage, downtown, stage <laughs> to the right. <laughs> So there's no, there's no like you know and now Christina quietly weeps to herself. No. It's just if it happens it happens. And if well, it I mean they used to do that, and if it happens it happens, and then they learned. And I always say, give me less words, because the more you tell me to do, the worse I'll suck. Seriously, like I'm like to the writers, I'm like, can you just write a little less, and then, because a lot of people on our show like to talk, I don't. I mean, like tonight I'm a chatter chatterbox Kathy because I've had so much coffee, but um. <laughs> I feel like, who's Chatterbox Kathy? Like, who is Chatty that? Kathy. Yeah, I'm like, that didn't make <laughs> That really freaking didn't make sense. Anyway, um, <laughs> Chatty Kathy. <laughs> That'd be a great character. Um, what was I saying? <laughs> oh, Time, yes. Yes. The word. The word. So there, there you go. Yeah. So, <laughs> well, you understand? Well, I'm curious, you know, in... In the vein of that, was it important to Jason and the producers that once the whole cast had been assembled, you do team building exercises? Because there's an insanely <laughs> like familial vibe on that show. I mean, you guys yeah. do seem like a family. We are a family. I mean, from the get-go, we just, all of us, it, was, it wasn't forced or weird either. There are some shows you're on or some sets you do, and you're like, oh my god, you're so amazing. You are so great. You want to go for coffee? And then you become like this weird instant best friend. And then after the, it's like summer camp, you never talk to him again. It, that to me is so creepy and weird. So, but th it's not like that on the show. It really isn't. It's everybody is um, compassionate towards each other. We love each other. Um, we've all gone through in the past four years so much with each other. Um, and we're all rooting for each other, and you see that on screen. And so in the big family scenes when we're shooting, and I'd always choose just to eat. Because it's like to get a word in, I don't even bother anymore. I, you'll see me just eating in the background going. <laughs> when I was pregnant, it was great. Um, I mean, I wasn't really pregnant, but. Um, so yeah, I mean, it just happens like that. It's just, it's, it's kind of awesome. I love that. As a fan, there's a little fan question in me, but you, I think, your character started calling Max Buddy on the show, mm -hmm. and then it seemed to evolve. Then you saw Lauren Graham's character calling her kids Buddy and her boyfriend Buddy, and then you had Erica Christensen calling her kids Buddy. Is that something that's in the script, and they just feel like that's a, the family nickname, or did that just happen organically? I started it. <laughs> I started it all. Hey, Buddy. And there's different ways to say, but hey, Buddy. Hi, buddy. No, I have no idea. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I sort of just, it just comes out. Yeah. Hey, buddy, you know. So over the years, as you guys have sort of organically grown with these characters, what have you enjoyed about the evolution of Christina? Um, I feel like the first two seasons, Christina, like, bugged me. Like, sometimes I wanted to just, like, slap her because she was so uptight. Um, but I understood, and I gave her a backstory because there really wasn't one um, about her family. You never, we've never seen her, her brothers or sisters, and like, who the hell are they? So I think that she didn't really have the best upbringing, and she has a tough exterior. Um, and you know, they would give me bits and pieces, and I would sort of elaborate and ask if I could elaborate a little bit, maybe about her father, and you know, saying things like, <clears throat> in regards to Adam to Hattie, you know, your dad is nothing like my dad was. Well, what does that mean? You know, so just little tidbits of information to give you a backstory about her. Um, and it helped me understand who she was more. 
um, and, and actually feel for her. And so now I think the first two seasons, um, she just was such a type A personality, and I know women like this, that want every single thing to be perfect because it wasn't like that for them, so therefore they're going to make it like this. And, you know, then she got, she was just thrown a, a bunch of stuff. And I think the best part of it is, like, in the last season, you start to see a little bit of this stuff chip away a little. And um, I don't know what they're writing for next season, but uh, I, I feel like they'll be, it'll be more celebratory and, and she won't be as so rigid. Like, who the hell would go to Bob Little and Amber's hotel room? And I don't know if anybody saw that. I'm like, I'm not doing that. I'm like, okay, I have to make it figure out why she would do that. Knocking on the door, that is so, I wanted to kick her ass. I was like, <laughs> what are you doing? But you, that you, I don't know, I had to do it, be, and, I, and I had to understand why I did it, um, or why she did it. Um, so, yeah, I just, I feel like I'm hoping this next season will be more of a celebration for her, and not so like, what? <laughs> you know, <laughs> what's wrong? Oh, I've got to finish. Like, calm, calm the hell down. Maybe she'll smoke more pot. I mean, I loved that episode. That was Wasn't a, it fun? That was a great episode. That was the hardest scene to do this whole year. Why? That was so damn fucking Why? Oh. That was good. Oh. Do it again. Why? Why? Okay. Um, because I'm not a big pot smoker. So, <laughs> believe it or not... <laughs> Even though my last name is Potter, somebody once wrote <laughs> some jackass actually wrote an article. I'm oh, sorry, like smoking Potter. He didn't like me very much. I don't know what I did to him, but I don't know some shit. But anyway, so <laughs> that was a hard episode because I'm not a big stoner, so it was like I had to figure out how what level to go because the worst things to do, and you guys know, is like how to act drunk. It's so. I can't, like, when you see a bad actor drunk, and I've done it I'm, whenever, you know, you, you're supposed to not act drunk. You're supposed to act like you're sober, which is hard. So that was a hard scene, because I was like, how stoned am I? <laughs> now, don't go back and watch it or whatever, because it was, I don't like it. It made me, see, I'm sweating. <laughs> <laughs> is this mine? Yes. Okay. Um, well, let me ask, you know, we're sort of talking about this last season, which was great because it was watching Christina, someone who, even when she had curveballs thrown at her in the first three seasons, found a way to control those. You know, Max and his Asperger's, and she made charts and plans. This season, Christina really had to confront something that she couldn't control right. in any way, shape, or form. Um, talked a little bit about how the breast cancer storyline came about with you and Jason. Um, okay, so... About a year ago, I was, I, Monica, myself, let's <laughs> talk about myself, third person, I went in for a mammogram, my first one, and um, just a routine visit, it was in April, and this was when we were on hiatus, uh, going into season four, and the, the radiologist, that, right? Yeah. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I would have no idea. The mammogramologist? <laughs> The technician. The technician. I like it. Our, yes, one of the lovely ladies there said, okay, she couldn't quite figure out what was going on, and she said they saw something. So the other lady, the higher-up lady, <laughs> the supervisor, this is great, <laughs> the manager, <laughs> the boob manager came in and said, <laughs> oh, my gosh. Um you know, let's let's look at what's going on here, and can you come back in three weeks? So then I came back in three weeks, and during that three weeks, I was like, what the, f what is happening right now? And I, I just emailed Jason right away, and I said, what about exploring maybe Christina having breast cancer this season? And he emailed me back right away, which, you know, was he's so busy, so sometimes it might take him a day or so, and he's like, I just got the chills, we're in the writing room, we just broke the story that Christina has breast cancer. So I'm like, holy shit, I hope to God I don't in real life, you know? <laughs> because I, I think it was an automatic reaction to, to, to email him and say, 
what if we explore this because to protect myself in a way? Because if I had it, I number one, I didn't want to lose my job. I don't even know what the reasoning was. And then, um, and then three weeks later, I went back and they they said it was fine to come back in six months. And then I come back another six months. And then I just went uh, two weeks ago, and there's nothing. It's all totally fine and good. So. It, I, I don't know what happened. It was just that thing that, you know, I think comes from God. I don't know. It was kismet, and it worked it, it, for him. His wife, Kathy, had gone through breast cancer. She's totally fine, um, which is great. She's a lovely woman. And I was just, like, so happy that I got to do that for, for her and them. Um you had gone through this in season, well, throughout the series with Max and the Asperger storyline. When you're playing a character, going through something that exists in the real world versus something like, you know, Schmegan's disease that they make up for the sake of the show, do you have to sort of allow the reality in that, you know, you're bringing to life something that millions of people go through, or does that sort of make the pressure of it too much and you kind of have to shut it out? Uh, so you mean, do I... You know, do you feel a pressure and oh, responsibility yeah. when playing that kind of oh, story? Oh yeah, definitely, I do. I also, but I also feel like you you have to have the balance. That's a good question. You're smart. That's a good question. You are. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> it's. I mean, I'm James Lipton, Monica. You are. <laughs> I mean, like, come James on. James Lipton <laughs> Jr. Um, no, hardly. In the year of our Lord, <laughs> whatever he says. <laughs> anyway, um. I feel like there was definitely a balance because I I, I didn't want to like overdo something or and I also made a choice to learn about the disease as Christina learned, mm -hmm. like I didn't go on the internet and I didn't do a bunch of research and I didn't ask a lot of questions to doctors and um, my husband's actually a cancer doctor so I um, I didn't ask him a lot of questions about like what it is or what it's like or and I so wanted to because I like to know you know um so I just I made a point to to just sort of not know anything and go through it just sort of like the Asperger storyline like learn as you go um but you would get the comments sometimes from people like how are you going to do it if you don't know what's going on so you had to block that out too you know yeah. I don't know who that lady was but someone but, I mean, it strikes me, you know, when you talk about creating backstory for your character, you strike me as an actor who likes a lot of preparation to some degree and thinks about those kinds of things. Was it difficult to then approach this by saying, like, well, I'm going to know nothing? Right. I, I, I'll get my script, and a lot of us on the show, I'm not included in this group, will have the script and take it home and, like, you know, eat some Cheetos or whatever and bring it back and, like, do the scenes without even, like, they're so able to do that. Peter and Dax made fun of me one day because we had just gotten, we were shooting two at a time, and I was, we were sitting, waiting to, to, to do a scene, and I start pulling apart the pages, stapling them, highlighting them, marking them, do this beat here, stop there, wait a second. And they're like, what the hell are you doing? This was last, this wasn't this past season, that was the season before, and I'm like, da -da 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 -da. and they're like, you, are you kidding? And I go, what, how do you guys study? Don't you study like this? Doesn't everybody study like this? And they're like, no, no one studies like this. You're a <laughs> moron. I, it looked like rainbow bright on my page. Like there was like highlights and stars. And then sometimes I have sometimes ADD, so there'd be like hearts and like <laughs> psychedelic, I don't know what. So, but this year I, I only used one highlighter Barely, and it still has ink in it, or whatever. <laughs> it's whatever. And I was really proud of myself because I didn't like overdo it. Mm -hmm. So we'll see if that lasts. I like it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we would be remiss if we sort of didn't talk about the one thing that parenthood always sort of comes back to, and what a lot of these people went through, and what you went through in the beginning of the panel. Just crying, just crying in general. I mean, the way this show elicits emotion from its viewers, I honestly don't know if I can think of something that's comparable. I just don't cry at any other show the way I cry at Parenthood, mm -hmm. which maybe says something about me, I don't know. Um, but my question for you is this, because out of everyone on the show, 
I feel like you are also crying as much as the audience mm -hmm. cries. Um, what is it like to play someone who is in a lot of ways in a constant state of being like a raw nerve? I mean, I feel like Christina's always like right here, like just about to cry oh, at all times. I know, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, um, I know, my boys, my older boys were like, what the, what the, well, they didn't say the F word, but they were like, okay, they did. <laughs> <laughs> They're older. Um, Danny was like, Mom, this is, then he said, BS. <laughs> this is bullshit. Why are you always crying on the show? Um, you know, and I said, I don't, he's just like, you're not like that in real life. And the fact that you, and I go, relax, we're paying the bills, aren't we? <laughs> I go, I, and my friends are like, why are you, you're crying and you're totally, I'm like, whatever, I'm working. <laughs> I got a job right now. Um, so I don't, I feel like, I don't know. I just, I feel like it, it's got, to, it's the writing. Like it just sits there and it is the writing. Like there's no way around that. You know, it, it, we're presented with this and it just takes over. But how much of a toll does that constant oh. sort of take on you as an actor? You get headaches. You know, you get headaches sometimes. You know, if you cry a lot, you get headaches or whatever, but at the, I will say this, at the end of this season, I got really depressed. I did, and I'm just being honest with you. Um, I actually went and saw a doctor, not my husband, um, for, for just, you know, I just felt really down and weird and out and, you know, um, and as actors, you guys, it's like they're, you can't really cut it off. I mean, we use, if you use everything in your body to create, you know, an emotion or get a point across, you're not, there's no, what your brain doesn't know that. It doesn't. So I was a little chemically unbalanced at the end of the season, but I'm better now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm great. <laughs> Did you imagine? <laughs> no, it's, it's all good. So it honestly, I mean, <laughs> it's, you don't feel like you need to listen to sad music before. You don't have sort of like a process of getting to that sad place, whether it's in this season or any before, you just kind of find the cry in the moment. You know what? No, because I feel like if I, I used to do that, like w doing movies or whatever, I, had, I would get so like amped up and like I got it. But I feel like the more I did that, the worse the performance was. Mm -hmm. If you just let it go or if you're like, I'm not going to get there. Okay, that's all right. That's fine. And then it comes because I feel like if you push really hard, it you're you're so stuck. Um, I learned this technique from actually from my um, therapist who I went to see after the, after the season, and she just told me to breathe in the shape of a a box and dig your feet into the ground. This is not making any sense, but I understand it. Um, and it's about breathing. It really is. And you know, that man's like, yes, it is. It's about breathing. And it, yeah, and, and becoming, um, just being grounded. And if, because if you're all over the place, you're, then I don't feel like anything good's happening, so. Do you think, and I've interviewed other actors who've worked for Jason or in similar situations. Is it difficult to transition to sort of more typical kinds of working environments once you've done something like Parenthood, which is so free form? I was working, or not working with, I would love to work with her, Emily Mortimer, um, right? She was talking to me about the newsroom. I had such anxiety for her, and she, you know, because I had done a show like Boston Legal for a year, and it was, it was so great, but I would drive onto the lot and have horrible panic attacks because the way that it was written, if you replaced an a uh instead of a the or an i, whatever it is, you're gonna do three paragraph, three pages all over again. And I'm just, so that to me, and look, those writers are amazing. Aaron Sorkin's ridiculous, but I don't know if I could ever act like that again. I don't know that I could. I really don't. I think that I would be in a constant state of panic. And I also feel like it would take just doing that one year in Boston Legal took so much time away from my family because I was always like sitting there and I was like chain smoking. Like what? I don't chain smoke. 
<laughs> like why? And then just all of that, those things that you do to get to that place mm -hmm. weren't healthy. So now that I'm older, you know, hopefully I can do a show like Parenthood forever. <laughs> I'll just make one up after this. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be on Hollywood Boulevard with Elmo and Cookie Monster like, look, it's the new parenthood. <laughs> <laughs> and like all the different costumes are all dingy and I will be smoking again. <laughs> That's so funny. That would be funny. In general, you know. You guys could all come as guests and people. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God. I mean, it's honestly, it already <laughs> sounds better than half of what we're seeing next season on television. Oh, <laughs> um, <laughs> when you look at characters, though, what is it that you historically tend to be attracted to in a person? Is it just as simple as if the writing's on the page, it'll be on the stage? Or do you look at the woman and the journey when you try to decide what you want to take on? Hmm. Um, you know what? This is going to sound really corny. But I, it's true. I pray about it. I do. I'm like, okay, am I supposed to do this or not? And I'm like, I'm like, can you give me a sign that I'm not demanding it? If the sign comes, it comes. If it doesn't, it doesn't. But I feel like everything happens as it should in my career. You know, um, I stopped acting for four years. I think I told you that story when I had to go back to Cleveland and my dad, whatever, he passed. And and so I feel like I'm starting all over again. And I have, I don't have any say over what. I, you know what happens. I do know that I'm working on my fears and what I will say yes and no to. And if I say no right away, that means there's something in it, unless it's a lawyer or a cop. <laughs> <laughs> then I run. Um, but I feel like it's something that is out of my control. Mm -hmm. And I always say that to actors that, like my friend Ben, is, who's a struggling actor, I'm like, hang in there. Breathe, relax. It's going to be okay. I, f I know this is going to be good. You're going to be okay. And you have to have this knowingness that it's going to be there for you when the right thing is there for you. I really believe that. Absolutely. With that said, I mean, obviously, prior to Parenthood and Boston Legal, you had done primarily film work. Mm -hmm. Now, having sort of gotten the chance to live with characters over extended periods of time, do you feel like you prefer one medium over another? You know, I like film. I do. I I haven't done it in a while. My last movie was Saw. No, not Saw. I don't remember. Last House on the Left. Um, same thing. Um, <laughs> so I really like film. Um, that's the other thing. Like the horror movies. I don't know. I feel like I feel like I I f TV is so well written now that um. I'm, I just feel lucky to be on a show that is on the air. And so for me, whatever you know the medium is, I'm happy to do it, but it's slim pickings for movies. You know, you gotta really bust your butt. They're not knocking on my door to, to you know, it's like, oh, there's an offer for a role to play a mom. You only work two days, but they want you to go in and read. And I'm like, I'm good. I'm okay. I mean, I, I play a mom on TV. Like I'm, I'm, I'm feeling that, so it's okay. Mm -hmm. um, we took some audience questions, and one that I think would be good, sort of based on a couple of things that you have said, is: Do you have any advice for women who are trying to get into the business or maintain in the business based on your experiences as a working actress? Oh, I don't know. I feel like it's. Uh, it's hard. And I'm not going to, you know, it's so hard. And it is, it is hard. It's like it's hard to even to get in and then maintain anything. You know, it's like especially nowadays with the social media stuff and, you know, everything's quick, quick, quick. And um, I just feel like if once you start to be become something you're not or try to become something that you're not, everything goes to shit. It just does, and so to maintain yourself, your sense of self, um, to me is the most important thing, no matter what that is, no matter if you're doing theater, film, television, radio, whatever. Um, miming. <laughs> I'm really good at miming. Um, whatever it is, as long as you're fulfilled, that's the main thing. But as soon as you start to sort of lose pieces of yourself and give that away, you don't have anything left. So I just feel like 
in the business sense of it, though, man, I don't know. I don't have anything poignant and uplifting to say about that. It's hard. But just be true to yourself. It sounds so cliche and weird, but. Well, Monica, thank you so much thank for coming for tonight. Me. Thank you all so thank much for coming out. Much. Thank you, the SAG Foundation. Have a lovely night. That was really fun.